Hello guys, welcome to Spec Transfer. Today we'll be looking at topics 3.1.7 water and 3.1.8 inorganic ions from the AQA A-level biology specification. So water is an important component of cells. It has several key properties that make it important in biology. The spec gives us five different properties we have to know and make sure you know all of these details as I've seen a five marker on this. Um, so you'd have to address all of the five different areas to get those five marks. So let's have a look at each of these in more detail. First off, water is an important metabolite in many metabolic reactions. Metabolic reactions being reactions that occur within cells. Metabolites are therefore either the reactants or products of metabolic reactions. Many metabolic reactions are either condensation or hydrolysis. For example, the joining of amino acids to form polypeptides is a condensation reaction, or the hydrolysis of disaccharides into monosaccharides. Second, water is an important solvent. Water is a polar molecule, meaning that it can form hydrogen bonds with other charged ions or polar molecules. Many ions or polar molecules can dissolve in it, meaning that it is a good solvent. All metabolites are aqueous, meaning that cells are the perfect environment for metabolic reactions as they're water-based. Next, water has a relatively high specific heat capacity. Due to hydrogen bonding, it takes a lot of energy to change the temperature of water, so water has a high specific heat capacity. Therefore, water doesn't experience rapid changes in temperature and acts as a buffer to sudden temperature changes. Therefore, aquatic organisms can live in a thermally stable environment and their enzymes can stay at optimum temperature. It also means that terrestrial organisms can resist temperature fluctuations and maintain a constant body temperature. Fourth, water has a high latent heat of vaporization. It takes a lot of energy to break hydrogen bonds and change water into a gas. Therefore, it takes a lot of energy for water to evaporate. This makes water an excellent coolant in organisms that perspire without losing too much water. Finally, we have cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is when water forms hydrogen bonds with itself and adhesion is when water forms hydrogen bonds with other materials. Due to hydrogen bonding, water is very cohesive. Cohesion allows water to flow, aiding the transpiration stream in plants, where water pulls more water up through the xylem as it moves as a continuous column. This is great for transporting substances. Cohesion also means that water creates surface tension when in contact with air, this means that sweat forms droplets, which can then evaporate to cool an organism down. Surface tension also allows insects, such as the pond skater, to move on the surface of the water, which provides a good habitat for such insects. Great, so now we've covered all the five reasons why water is important in biology. Next, we'll move on to inorganic ions. So first of all, what does inorganic mean? Well, inorganic means that it does not contain carbon. So let's have a look at some examples of inorganic ions. For example, H plus ions, also known as protons. The concentration of H plus ions determines the pH. The higher the concentration of H plus ions, the more acidic the environment. And pH is important because it affects enzyme controlled reactions. Next, we have Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus ions. Hemoglobin in red blood cells contains Fe2 plus at its centre, which binds to oxygen to temporarily become Fe3 plus. This is important in transporting oxygen around the body in the bloodstream. Na plus ions. Na plus ions are needed for co-transport across cell surface membranes, for example, a sodium glucose co-transporter protein or a sodium potassium pump. It's also needed for nerve impulse transmission. Finally, we have phosphate ions and there are many uses for phosphate ions. For example, the bonds between phosphate groups store energy in ATP. Phosphate groups also allow DNA and RNA nucleotides to join to form polynucleotides. And finally, phospholipids. Note that inorganic ions occur in solution in the cytoplasm and in body fluids. 
So we've given a general overview of inorganic ions and we've had a look at some examples of inorganic ions and their roles in the body. Thanks for watching Spec Transfer. Next time we'll be talking about cell structure.